recording. All the recordings of these classes I've recorded, and it's on my YouTube channel. It's all there. Every single one of them. And that's one. Two, really, these books are useless anyway. It just has the Hebrew, which we anyway don't read. And then everything I teach you about the Midah is you can take notes on. My test would probably... Can I tell you after? Can I tell you at the end? I don't want to use this time. I'm going to tell you at the end. I don't need anything. I just want to start. Everybody, let's begin. Okay, let's begin. Let us start. Let us begin. Today we are doing Hanukkah, because I don't know if I'm going to see you on Hanukkah, and I really want to give you some Torah on Hanukkah. Okay, are you learning about Hanukkah at all? Yeah? Yeah. It's like, how many how many classes on Hanukkah have you had so far? I've had a few. Nice. Can we close this window right behind me? I'm so Nope. I'm good. A day in the life of a speaker. You wake up to know a voice. Okay, after I left last night, I went to speak at another place, and then afterwards, my was done. Finished. No more voice. And this morning, I woke up, my kids were like, are you a man? <laughs> I'm like, not yet. Hang in there. Um, okay. We we are starting. Not yet. Not yet. At these days, you can't say that, right? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I didn't mean it, guys. <laughs> Not like that. Okay. Uh, I love being a woman. I just was sitting with a few friends last night, and I was like, you know what? I just feel like Baruch Shalom Sani Gevel. You know? Because I love being a woman. It's amazing to be a woman in this time of life, in this life. It's amazing. Women are incredible. You'll know more about it when you become more women. You'll understand. Okay, let us begin. Okay. First of all, do you have any classes on like the power of women? The power of femininity? The power of like... Do you have the classes on like uh, Queen Esther, the Navios, Imos, Der Tchunos Anefesh? Yehudis. Your name is Yehudis? No. I just never knew that story. Though. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know what? We have to have, maybe we could put into the schedule a class on female power. We need it. Because yeah. cause, cause cause we learn from these like women what it's like to be a woman. Because today, what they're doing to us is that they're doing what they did. That's what it says in the Nivuos. What does it say in the And Girls, I'm so sorry that I sound like a frog. I apologize. I know it's not so easy to hear me and listen to me. But you're going to have to deal with it anyway. I put on a whole face of makeup for you. So, um, uh, what, is it, what does it say in the, in the Nivuos? It says that, Acharit Kereshit, which means that the last redemption, the last redemption our redemption is going to be identical to the first one. What was the first one? When was the first time the Jewish people were exiled? Mitzrayim. So meaning, look at the look at the open like Shemos. Look at what they went through. Look at look at the uh, the exact Shi'ibut of what they went through, and then just copy and paste. It literally is going to be a modern day Egypt in terms of what we went through, in terms of the slavery, the slavery mentality. And today there's so much slavery mentality, right? Where people feel like, if I'm not skinny, if I'm not pretty, if I'm not this, if I'm not that, then I don't belong, then I have no friends, and all these things that people are really slaves in their mindset because of what they see around them. And the message is very, very, very clear. If you're not beautiful, gorgeous, and successful, and then you're not, like, you're not in the game, Right, and that's the constant message, the Western message, the Western message that the world is giving today, and that's why so many kids are depressed, you know, self-medicating in all sorts of ways, and there's so much of that, and that's exactly what happened in Mitzrayim, the slavery mentality where they were so used to the abuse that they felt like we want to go back to Egypt. We at least we know the abuse there. At least I know what I'm going to face. I need, I know. It's like the wife that gets beat and she says, like, I want to stay with my husband because at least I know that, like, if I serve him his food cold, I'll get punched in the face. I know what to expect. It's another guy, I don't know what to expect. I don't know what his crazy is. His crazy could be something else completely. You know what you know, so you stay with what you know. You know, it's like the people that say, you know, it's like somebody, you know, ever walked into a house that has a bad smell? Yeah. And, like, the people inside don't smell it? Their house smells, and they have a smell. When they walk out of their house, they smell like their house, yeah. right? And then they don't smell it. 
Because when you're in the garbage, you don't smell it. Okay, you can feel uncomfortable. You can feel like something's wrong. I don't want to be here. I don't love this so much. But you get used to it. Even a person can even get used to garbage. Right? Why? Because that's the slavery mentality. After a while of being used to, to behavior or to experiences or to people or to a toxicity or whatever it is, person gets used to that level and all of a sudden other things seem so like not in their realm. And it's exactly what happened in Egypt. And if you look at what's going on today, you see it. So when I say, I'm so happy that I'm a woman, thank God for making me a woman. Why? Because it's going to be the female power. It was the female power that took us out of Egypt. And it's going to be the female power that's going to take us out of this exile. Which means it's the female clarity. And I want to read to you something right now that's incredible. When I read it, I was like, oh my gosh, my jaw was open. Totally like shocked. Ready? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the day that Matasiao's daughter, okay, was supposed to get married. And all the leaders of the generation came to her engagement party. This is like near Hanukkah, right? <coughs> this is Hanukkah. No, but like the, the Sefer? And his daughter comes in to the party that she's supposed to get she's supposed to be getting married and she's acting Matasiao Kohen Gadol. Matasiao Kohen Gadol, okay? Khashmonaim. And she's acting Bikhasar Tsniut with a lack of tsnius. That's crazy. And Gadol Israel are there. Her father, the Kohanim are there. What? You heard something like this? Listen to this. Who? He did? All of you? I just heard this for the first time. Listen. And her brothers, the five, you know the five the Maccabim that went out and fought Yavan? These five brothers, the big ones, they wanted to kill her. They wanted to kill her because of the way she's acting. Meaning they got very angry. Amralem, listen to what she says to them. Shimauni achai, listen to me, my brothers. Vedodai and my my uncles. Bishvil shamanati vechulo atem it kanimbi because of the way I am acting. That's why you're you're you want to hurt me. Then atem it kanim lemasreni biad arel, and you're not trying to hurt the person that put me in the hands of a arel arel. Someone that is Ayn Reish Lamed, somebody that is not Jewish and is a Russia. You're angry at me instead of being angry at him? That you're putting me in his hands? Hello, Yashlachem Lilmon, Mishimon, Velevi, Achidina. You have a lot to learn from the Shvatim, Shimon, and Levi, the, son, the brothers of Dina. We know that Dina got raped, right? And we know what her brothers did when they found out, right? Do you know what they did? They killed out the entire city. Not the guy that raped her. Everybody. She says to them, you have a lot to learn from these bro- of these two brothers of Dina. Shimon and Levi. They were only two. And they were so um, uh, zealous for their sister's cover for her, her, herself, for, who she, for what she went through. They killed everybody. The small and all the way up to Shechem. And they sacrificed their lives. They sacrificed their lives for what's right and the Baruch Hu helped them. And your five brothers. And you have Kohanim more than 200 at your side. Simu b'matnochem al hamakom v'u Trust God and He's going to help you. They came up with a plan and they said, We're going to go to the king and we're going to tell him. Our sister is the daughter of the Kohen Gadol. You know what that means? 
She's the daughter of the Kohen Gadol. So they're going to tell, go to the king and tell him. And our sister is not going to sleep with this Hagmon, this filthy guy. They kill the king, Nakash Bochu helped them, and this is the beginning of the war. No, this is not the beginning of the war. Scratch that. It's not the beginning. The beginning of the war happened when he killed somebody else. Wait. The sister, because they were under Greek rule here in Israel. Okay? The entire Israel is ruled by Greeks. Okay? They're big, army, strong, Greek. Greeks, Yavan, the whole thing is beauty. The whole thing is uh, Sparta, uh, what is it called? Sparta. 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 What's Spartacus? And the Olympics. And they, they worship. They like they bow down to body and strength. And like a baby was born in, uh, in Greece. That wasn't perfect. If you had some kind of defect, they would throw him off a cliff. They were psycho. So the Jews here were terrified of them. They were terrified of them. It tells over here that Matasyahu was also scared. Matasio and his uh, and his sons were also scared of the the Yavanim. Until one day, Matasio is walking around here somewhere, Jerusalem, and he sees a Misyavin, a Jew that was turning into a, a, a Greek a guy, was walking like them, talking like them, acting like them. A Misyavin, which was which was the agenda of the generation. The agenda of the generation was to take all the Jews and assimilate them and convert them into Misyavnim. And the only way to do that is to take away their Torah. Take away their Torah. That's why they had the whole dreidel thing, right? Because they, they weren't allowed to do Torah, Mila, Rosh Chodesh, Shabbos. They weren't allowed to do anything that had to do with Judaism. They were allowed to live. <clears throat> and now there's a rule of thumb. Before I get to the rule of thumb, Matasiyahu was walking by a Misyavin. And this Misyavin was bringing up a carbon on the Mizbeach to Avodah Zarah. And when he did that, Matasio saw him. And in that moment, in all of his like fear and all of that stuff that he was going through, okay, everyone was going through over here, he jumped on him and he killed him. Because he was so zealous for the truth. What are you doing? Bringing a tummy animal to the Mizbeach. You, 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 you psycho. You crazy. You lost your direction in life. You don't know who you are anymore. And he killed him. And that was the beginning of the war that, that today we celebrate when we night the menorah. The beginning of the war when we say, Shemona Esrei, Giborim Bad Me'atim, Chalashim Bad Giborim, right? We say, we say how, Giborim Bad Chalashim, Giborim Bad Chalashim, Me'atim Bad, Rabim, right? The whole war that happened, that was such a crazy miracle. That was this, that was the beginning here. When he jumped on him and he couldn't, he couldn't handle seeing the lack of honesty and the lack of truth. Something incredible. I the approach of like this, this generation though, because like, there's like the same thing going on, like, but like, you can't attack the Jew for doing that. Like, right. And he says that here. He says that here. In our generation, we're too weak to really um, look, look, look Shekhar in the eye and say, you're Shekhar. We're too, we're too, we're too um, uneasy about it. Even then, they were uneasy to lift their heads up and fight against the Romans. Romans. The Jews were always scared to fight back. Even in the Holocaust, right? We were scared to fight back. All the way from Egypt, we never resisted, right? Because why? And this is the crazy part, okay? Uh, this whole Leket uh, Rashimot here, <coughs> the whole thing is talking about how when a person, for that, Remember Og? Remember Og Menel Chabashan? Remember the giant? Remember him? So he comes to Avram Avinu. He tells Avram Avinu, Ayala, by the way, I was looking for you yesterday. Really? Yeah, we were supposed to have a, a meeting. You, we were know. supposed to have a meeting. They literally brought me in for, like, you. Oh. So Because you asked so many times. And I waited for you. I didn't know. So now, to, to pay me back, come here. <laughs> I want you to sit next to me. Can you sit next to me? <laughs> awesome. No worries. It's all good. Okay. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Say hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs>
all over the place. You guys are now you're going to go viral. <laughs> all right. So, um, Og, Og tells Avram, listen to this. I'm only telling you this because it's so amazing. Okay, listen. He goes in and tells him, listen, your nephew, Lot, he was kidnapped. By who? By the four kings. The four kings. The four kings was the biggest. They were the, like the biggest powers of the world then. Imagine America, Russia, Korea, and China. Hi, America, Russia, Korea, and China. Kidnapped your kid. He's dead. <laughs> He's a goner. Why did he say this to Abraham? He said it to Avram because he knew that Avram was going to go. He was going to go and he was going to get Lot back. He knew he was going to do that. And when he knew that he was going to go and get Lot back, he knew he was going to take his wife, Sarah. That's why he said this to him. Because he knew that Avram was crazy enough to stand up against four superpowers of the world to get back Lot. And that's exactly what Avram did. Why? Because Avram... The blood that we have flowing through our veins, the blood of our forefather Abraham, and every single one of our our matrix and matrix that we come from, the gener- the who the Jewish people come from, they have. There's no looking sheker in the eye when something is not right, not just, not okay, and saying, "All right, let me turn a blind eye." Why are the Jew non-Jews so 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 in our face today with anti-Semitism? It says straight up in the Torah. If the rise, when does the anti-Semitism rise? When the Jewish mm-hmm. people totally forget who they are and what kind of superpower they have. And the non-Jews come and say, you, Jew, Jew. Why do they keep screaming Jew? Why are Jews all over the news today? It's not in a good way today. Because they're picking out all the Jews that are rotten and they're talking about them. Big part of the, uh, the Jewish people is the Arab Rav. They're not Jewish. They've come, they are living amongst us in, other, in order to hurt us. In order, the self-hating Jews, I know the self-hating Jews, them. They're Arab Rav. And today the world's screaming, Jew, you're a Jew. When does the guy scream, you're a Jew? When the Jew forgets who he is. And he forgets what a Jew is. It's not just keeping the mitzvot. Obviously it's keeping the mitzvot, but it's not just that. The glue of the Jewish people, the fire of the Jewish people, the strength of the Jewish people, the strength of the Jewish women in the Jewish people is our ability to do exactly what our ancestors did over and over again. And that is what saved us and that is what allowed the Jewish people to survive till today because all the superpowers of the world are no longer around. The ones that try to hurt us, take us away, kill us, murder us, they're, they're no longer on the world, in the world. No one knows about them. They don't exist. They're powder. They're sand. They're gone. The Greek empire that we're talking about, there's no Greek empire today. There's no Greek empire. Who sought after people of all time, killed throughout all the generations. How have they outlived the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Syrians? How do they outlive all these massive superpowers of the world? How? And this is how. And this is the glue of Hanukkah. And this is the fire behind Hanukkah. And this is what Hanukkah is. When they took over, when they went out and they fought the Greeks, when the Jews, the Jews, the Jews, the Jews, the Jews, so few in number, so skinny, they went out to fight the Greeks. The Greeks. They were all muscle. They were all about strength, power. That's what they were. That's what they stood for. Like I said before, any child that was born with a little defect, they would throw him off a cliff. They didn't they didn't, they didn't, they weren't, they don't want defects. There's no weakness amongst us. But the power of the Jew that is able to outlive them, is able to beat them, is able to, to, to eradicate them, all this bad, all this darkness in the world, because that's what Yavan was. Lachshich Torotam. Right? To darken, to darken the light. That was, that was Yavan. To take away, to darken, to make it dark. 
the light of what? The light of the soul, the light of emotion, the light of the light of all of the light of the Jewish people, who we are, what we stand for. That's why we don't have Christmas lights. We have fire. Because Christmas lights are fake. They look pretty, but they're fake. It's all fake. It's electricity. One wrong move, the whole thing goes out. We go straight to the source. The source is fire. Because that is the Jewish neshama. That is the Jewish neshama. That is the Jewish power. That is why we're still here. That's why you're sitting here today in Jerusalem, in the land of Israel, despite all odds. They try to take our land away. They try to take our people away. They try to take everything away. And we've survived them all. How? Because of the power of Hanukkah. What's the power of Hanukkah? Over and over and over again, we see it in the story. A Jewish person's strength that he gets is not in his power. It's not in his uh, muscles. It's not in his muscles. Lo b'chayil. Velo b'koach. It's not in army. It's not in horses. It's not in, it's not in artillery. Military. It's not. That's not where our power comes from. It's not. That's why the Haredim say the army is bidyavid because we have a much higher power that we can tap into than the army. That's what the other world, that's what other nations of the world do. We have a power that makes us the Jewish people that God gave us. It's not that we're so special. Hashem put this into the fabric of the creation of our people. It's who we are. What is that power? Remember, do you know the story of the Hananiah, Meshav, Azariah? They were thrown into the furnace. Do you remember this story in Navi? I'm not going to get into the story now. They went to they went to a big navi, a navi, the Yechaskel navi. They went to Yechaskel navi, <clears throat> and they told Yechaskel, "I'm a navi. We they want to throw us into the furnace, into a furnace, into an oven, into a crematorium. They want to for, throw us into the crematorium. Are we going to survive?" And Yechaskel is a navi, and he looked and he said, "Yo, no, you're not going to survive. You're going to die." And you know what they did? They went back. And they went to the furnace. They didn't run away. They went to the furnace. There's a whole story behind why and what they had to do in order, what they did over there. They did a, a, they, what they did was insane, the amount of emunah that they had. And when they jumped into the furnace, they were saved. God saved them. They came out unscathed, like Avraham. When he went into the Kivshan Aish and he came out unscathed. And he said, how? The Medrash talks about how, how is that possible? Yecheskel and Navi saw in his nevuah they were going to die. And then it says over there in the Pesukim and the Navi, it says, Baruch Hu said, I wanted to save you. But in order to save you, I needed you to do mysterious nefesh. I needed you to trust and believe that everything is for my best and jump into the fire. And God is protecting me and watching me, even though all odds are against me. All odds are against me. It's all, there's nothing in my human eyes that I can look at and say, oh, I have something to hold on to. Oh, there's a ray of hope. Nothing. There's no ray of hope. They knew they were going to die, they even as the Navi, more than that, and they were saved. There's something, there's a musag, there's a concept in Judaism, it's called mysterious nefesh, and it is our superpower. It is the Jewish people's superpower, it's what allowed us to survive till today, and what's going to give us the Geula and Mashiach, and bring us to the next era. And it's what's going to stop anti-Semitism. The number one power of the Jew is his ability not to see not to know. Come on. They were going to go fight an entire superpower, a world power, the size of Greek, Greece. And they're like a few guys. Well, how many were there? A few hundred? A few hundred Kohanim? That's it. And they weren't like military, guns. They, they didn't know. They didn't have any, they didn't have any yeah, experience with these things. They were like working in the base of Megdash. You know? That's it. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And this, please, girls, take this with you forever and take this with you through Hanukkah and during your candles and while you're lighting your candles and sitting there for the first 30 minutes and not on your phone and just looking at the candles and looking at that light that's coming down. It's the Olga news. The Zohar tells us it's the light, the hidden light that only comes down on the first half hour of after you light the candles for the eight days of Hanukkah. That's it. It's the hidden light that will be exposed to the world when Mashiach comes. Until Mashiach comes, this hidden light is away. It's it's taken away. It's all the news, it's the hidden light. 
only for the first half hour, it's just in the Zohar, that that light, that hidden light comes down into the world. And when you look at the candles, you just look at the fire, you have to know that in spiritual terms, what you're doing is you're, the spiritual vitamins are going into you and healing your soul and strengthening you and even more so giving you clarity. Because a person without the ability to see without a clear vision in their life, what yes, what no, who to be with, who not to be with, who's good for me, who's not good for me, where should I go, where should I put my efforts? That clarity is bigger than anything else a person has in their life. A person can have money and wealth and a house and everything. If they don't know what yeah, what not, if they're not clear between good and bad, if they don't know that the relationship that they're in is toxic and is hurting them, if they don't see clearly, if they don't have clarity, they can't make out what they're looking at, what's right, what's good for them. They're going to lose everything in the end. They're going to lose themselves. But if a person has clarity, if a person has clear vision as to what yes and what not and what steps to take and what people to stay close to, what people to stay away from, how to go through life, how to respond to situations, if a person has clarity, he'll get everything in life. He'll get everything in life. Clarity is the number one. When you sit in front of those candles, you have to know Hashem is giving you spiritual clarity, the ability to know without knowing how you know. That gut feeling that you have about what to do next in your life, about who to be friends with, about yeah, if to say no to this guy or yes to this guy, that gut feeling that you have, that's your clarity. That's your knowing. That's your intuition. And that you get from looking at the candles of Hanukkah and getting that organus, that hidden light, that gives you that knowing. But the Jewish people, most biggest strength, their glue, is their Mesir Snefesh. Mesir Snefesh is, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't see an answer. I don't know how to get, I don't know how to do, I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know how, what's going to help. There's no answers. There's no medicine. There's no treatment. There's no, there's no, no one has any answers. I don't know. I don't know how to feel better. I don't know how to change my life. I don't know how to make the situations in my life better. I don't know how to grow. I don't know how to break my my self stuff stuckness. I don't know. I need a miracle. I need a miracle. I don't know how to how to stay in Israel for longer. I don't know how to like Israel. I don't know how to like seminary. I don't know how to I don't have the answers to everything in my life. I don't have them. Guess what? That's part of life's human condition. We're never going to have all the answers and we're never going to know and it's going to bother us till 120. Because I'm always going to, when I, when I want to figure something out and I don't know the answer, then I'm, 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 I'm bogged down by it. I'm bogged down by the fact that I have a problem and I don't know how to fix it. Monsieur Snefesh tells us you don't need to know. What you need to do is do the right thing even when it's hard. That is sacrifice. When I sacrifice for something that I want to have close to me, I get closer to it. It's the glue. Sacrificing for something that is important to me, that I want to have in me. I want this to be a part of me. I want this to be a part of my being. I want to be that kind of person. I want to respond that kind of way. I want to love that kind of way. I want to give that kind of way. I want to show up in that kind of way. That's the kind of person I want to be. You got to know that the way to get there it's through sacrificing for that thing. You're not going to have best friends if you can't go out of your way for someone. You're not going to have real close relationships, like real close relationships, if you can't sometimes put yourself on hold for them and be there for them when they need you. Anything. You can't really, really like davening if you don't push yourself to daven when you don't want to. You can't really... The Torah tells us, has a keel... Meaning, it's going to be a part of you forever. It's not just going to be a part of you forever. It's going to be a part of your children forever. Of your children's DNA forever. Whatever you sacrifice for today will be a part of your life and your children's DNA forever. Whatever is important to our person in their life, they will sacrifice for. And whatever we sacrifice for, we get close to and we become one with. Because the act of sacrificing creates a kiyum. A kiyum means something that can't, can't be broken. Something that will, for generations will be. You bring life into the thing that you want. It's not like, I really want to succeed, but like, I don't really want to do anything for that. 
to happen. Then you can't, it's not going to happen. It's always going to be the thing that you're going to go out of your comfort zone for, that you it's going to be a little hard for you to do. It's that waking up in the morning that extra 10 minutes late, earlier because you want to you want to do something, you want to pray, you want to meditate, you want to you want to be with God, you want to just take you want to do something. It's that extra push that you don't feel like it. That's what makes you grow. That's what makes you become that person that you want to become. And you make it part of your DNA. Why do we have Avram Avinu's DNA? Why do we have the Jewish people? Why do we have this thirst, this longing, this, 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 un, un, you can't explain it, engine for chesed, for loving one another, for taking strangers into our houses. We don't know them, they're our siblings. For giving our houses away to strangers when they come for Shabbos, we don't know them, take our house, take our stuff, take everything. Where do we get this from? It's because our ancestors were most their nephesh to the point where he didn't see, he didn't care. Oh, I'm going to war now with the four kings and they might kill me. Lot is kidnapped? Lot is kidnapped? My nephew was kidnapped by them? I'm there. There was no stopping him. Something is wrong, I'm going to fix it. There's no stopping him. I'm not going to see, I'm not going to see bad, evil in front of my face and say, okay, it is what it is. I'm going to stand firmly against it and say, this is Sheker. This is wrong. I'm not, that's the power of a Jew. Mm-hmm. To fight for what's right, even if it makes no sense. No sense I'm going to win. No sense I'm going to get any help from above. No sense I'm going to, I'm going to live and survive this. But if this is the right thing to do, that's what I'm going to do. And that's what creates that genetic DNA coding that we give over to our children. Hana and her seven sons, where, where, in God's name, did they get the strength, every single one of those kids, to jump off the roof and not worship the Avodah Zarah? Where? Where do they see that? God, crazy. It's, it's Gzeir Shmad. They have to now bow down to this idol or to this man, to this, I don't remember exactly, the, 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 the person that they had to bow down to, the king. I think it was the king. Everybody had to bow down to him. And they told her, she had seven sons. You ever been to her to her cave in Sva? Did you have a Sva Chabaton yet? No. Oh, wait. So I want to come on that with you guys. Wow, yeah, it's super, been. super, super amazing. You've been there? Yeah. To Hana? Yeah. Yeah, in that cave? Yeah. Hana had seven sons here in Israel. And they, it was a Gezer Shema time. And they told every all the Jews here that they had to bow down to this one person. And her son, one by one, went up in front of the king and said, I'm not bowing to you. And so then he took his ring off and he dropped it in front of him and he said, pick up my ring. And they said, no, we're not picking up your ring. And he said, I was gonna, I'm going to kill you. And one by one, they jumped off the roof until it got to the little one, three-year-old. And Hannah was standing there. Because Gezer Shmad is, means that if they ask you <clears throat> to do, to break, you have to rather give up your life. That's Gezer Shmad. Certain times in our Jewish history, do you know what we've gone through as a people? Do you know what kind of people we come from? People talk about sacrifice, talking about getting out of bed five minutes early. Except for we didn't come from those people. We came from these people. because they all died. No, we came from these people. That's the generation, that's, that's the Jewish people. That's who we come from. They died. Hana died, but that is the the uh, the people we come from. That is the that's who we come from. It wasn't foreign. It wasn't like oh my gosh, she did that. Her kids did that. Who does that? No, that was like what the Jews did. The guy came after us. Every single generation, the guy would come after us. Every single generation. They came up. And every single generation, they will come after us to destroy us, to abolish us, to demolish us. And the ship saves us from their hands. And the same is today. Same as today. Now they're saying, they're saying, they're saying crazy stuff, but we know, we know that anti-Semitism only is on a rise when the Jewish people forget, get lost, get assimilated, forget who they are. Totally forget their superpower. 
It's like the kid that doesn't realize that he has like, he's a genius. He's a genius. He doesn't even need to sit through classes. And he has such a low self-esteem that he's scared to even open up the book because he doesn't think he knows how to do it. But boy, you're, you're a genius. You, don't, you, you, can, you can eat the book for breakfast. What's the book for you? What you do it in your sleep? You're nothing. You're a genius. He's like sitting on top of his superpower. He's sitting on it. He's so scared. He's so insecure. He doesn't realize he has a superpower. And that's the Jewish people. And when we get like that too much, we get too apologetic about who we are. We get too weak in our responses. We get like too sure everything is allowed. Yeah, for sure. We're, everything is allowed. And we don't put a stop to where darkness takes over and say, no, we don't want darkness. We're, we're people of light. We're people of love. We're people of chesed. We're people of unity. We're people when, when there's an earthquake or a tsunami and, and somewhere in the world, the Jewish people, the, Israel is the first one on the scenes. That's who we are. And that's what we stand up for. That's what Batasiel was. He saw it in front of his face. There were soldiers all around and he couldn't think. He saw, he saw darkness. He saw evil. And he had to get rid of it. That's what he, that's the strength that we come from. There's no room for evil. Evil, there's no room for evil. Evil people that hurt people, that do bad to people, there's no Rachmanis on them. None. There's no Rachmanis on them. People that really are evil, there's no Rachmanis on them. People that want to take away the good in the world and turn it into bad and turn it into war and to crimes. That's evil. I was just listening to this podcast and this guy was saying, I don't remember his name exactly. He was saying how like he grew up in Chicago and back in the day there were gangs, but they were like nice. They were like groups of like chavra. And they tried to like get kids off the street and they would do like all these like workshops and different things. And the government got wind. They got wind of what was going on there by these poor, very poor neighborhoods. At these groups where people were trying to do, like trying to bring, like trying to shape up their lives by the black community. And they would send in, the government would send in instigators to start fights between the two groups. And that's how gang banging and all that mm-hmm. stuff started. They would give them weapons, they would give them money to get them fighting against each other. That's evil. That's evil. That's taking the goodness in someone, the goodness in people, and turning it bad, turning them against each other. Why? What's the gain? What's the benefit? Because if you keep people fighting, then they're not united. And if people are not united, then the government can decide what's going to be. When people are united, it's scary for the government. So why are we saying this right now? Because I want to tell you that in our lives, with Hannah and her seven sons, that they all jumped and they all committed suicide and they all didn't bow down to this idol during that time, during that specific time. The people that we come from are people that have sacrificed and anything that you sacrifice for in your life, you have to know you're going to get close to. Karban means a sacrifice. What's the sharish of karban? What's the root? Karov. Karov. Anything you sacrifice for, you get close to. What do, you want to. what do you want to get close to? What do you want to get close to? Sacrifice for it. That's why <clears throat> the things that we've sacrificed for as a people, like bris milah, like not worshipping Avodah Zara, those are the things that the Jewish people sacrifice their life for. Their lives, their physical lives, they sacrifice for these mitzvahs. These mitzvahs are the most widely accepted in the Jewish people, amongst everyone. Today, there's a movement of like not circumcising or whatever, but for the majority of thousands of years worth of generations, we've circumcised, we've circumcised our babies. And come what may, we're going to sacrifice our babies. We're going to sacrifice our babies. We're going to circumcise our babies, God forbid. <laughs> mm-hmm. What? Yeah, right. Yeah, God forbid. Yeah, because we, we, because, because, because our gener- our people that we come from, our ancestors sacrificed for bris milah. Because they sacrificed to not worship our vodazara. That's why vodazara. We don't sacrifice. We don't. We don't do that. But let's say a mitzvah like tefillin. That's what he says in this in this uh, mamar. He says a mitzvah like tefillin. We haven't sacrificed for it. People haven't sacrificed for it. They haven't died leman tefillin. So that's why it's such a hard mitzvah for so many men to keep. Anything that we've sacrificed for, 
is for generations. And that is the power of Hanukkah. The power of Hanukkah is to understand that these eight days are the eight days of clarity. It's the eight days of vision, of being able to see clearly in your, in your life what yes and what not for you. How do you get that clarity? By sitting in front of those candles and looking at the candles for the first half hour, looking at the organ who's getting those spiritual vitamins in. And the second thing is to understand that the whole reason that the Jewish people were saved and the land of Israel was saved and the, the Greeks came ran, running out of here. The only reason we were able to get such tremendous yad nishmaya from above, which is what we need today, we're in such, we're in such scary times. The number one thing we need today is for us to believe in the unbelievable. Believe in the unbelievable. Believe in the thing that you don't know how to make happen, but it's the miracle that you need in your life. Believe in that and jump in the water and God will open the sea for you. He will split it for you. But you got to jump in. You have to sacrifice for the thing that you believe and the thing that you want. I don't know how I'm going to lose all this weight. I don't know how I'm going to pass, you know, how I'm going to go back home after this year. I don't know how I'm going to keep Shabbos. I don't know how I'm going to continue wearing skirts. I don't know how I'm going to break up with my boyfriend and be broken up with him. Or I don't know how to be showman again with him. I don't know. Girlfriend, this is what I'm telling you. This is what you have to do. When you're feeling weak and you can't get out of bed and you can't break up or you can't be shomer or you can't say no to that food or you can't say yes to something that's healthy for you and good for you, if you push yourself, if you push yourself because it's good for you, because you know it's right for you and you push yourself outside of that comfort where it's comfortable into the area of discomfort, it's not comfortable to get out of bed at 5 o'clock in the morning. It's not comfortable to say, I'm sorry, I'm shomer to somebody. It's not comfortable to go daven when you don't feel like it. It's not comfortable to put on a skirt where all you want to put on is leggings and your boots and just get out. It's not comfortable to not speak Lil Shahara when you're dying to speak Lil Shahara. When you sacrifice for what is good for you, in that moment you are creating a fire, you are creating a glue, you are creating a power in your life that will only bring in Bracha from Hashem. When Hashem sees you sacrificing something that doesn't make sense, it's so hard for you, and you sacrifice for it, the Greek, he will bring down, he will bring the Greek army to their knees for you. He will bring everything down to its knees for you. When Nachshon jumps into the Yamsuf, there's a gigantic ocean in front of him, and he jumps in knowing he's going to drown. 100%. And once the water hits his nose, the, split, the, sit, the sea opens because the message is, girls, and with this we're going to end, the message is, I have to take a step outside of what's comfortable into the area of scary, into the area of discomfort, into the area of low bali. I don't feel like it, but I'm going to do it because it's right in order to receive the miracle that I want and to, to receive the miracle that I deserve, that I want, that God wants to give me. God wanted to save Hanania, Mishal, Azaria. He wanted to, but in order for God to save them, they had to take a step into something scary. You have to do things that are scary in your life. You have to risk things in your life in order to change, in order to grow, in order to get bracha, in order to receive miracles. And that is the message of Hanukkah. You can't just sit pretty and expect everything to come to you without getting your nails dirty. You got to get your nails dirty. You got to crack some of them also. That's life. That's how it works. That's the recipe. That's the message. That's the equation. That's the formula. You want to get close to something. You want something to become a part of you. You want to grow. You want to get strong. You want to come out of your wishy-washiness. You want that? Sacrifice for something that you want. And you will see. You will get it with bracha, with miracles, and with kiyom. It's going to last forever. It's not going to leave you. And it's going to go into the DNA of your children. People that are people that give for causes that are big in life. When I say causes that are big in life is coming out of comfort, coming out of easy, coming out of the same known area, coming out of, you know, what I do every day, out of habit. That, doing that, is our superpower. And once I step outside of that, and into the unknown, and into the, you know, the getting off of the fix, the drug that I'm addicted to, whatever the drug is that I'm addicted to. It could be anything. It could be a person. 
It could be a relationship. It could be food. It could be my phone. It could be drugs. It could be, it could be addicted to dopamine, like we were saying yesterday, which is generation that's addicted to dopamine is this generation, 100% dopamine hits 24-7. Every single time you get a WhatsApp message, it's a dopamine hit. Do you know that? Every single time you have a, get a WhatsApp message, your, your brain sends out dopamine. Because it's associated. You get excited. It's associated with something good. We're so hooked to the dopamine of placating, placating, placating this thing, making me feel good. I want to feel good. I want to taste yummy good. I want to do only things that are comfortable and easy. I don't want to do things that are hard. I don't want to push myself to go to the gym. I don't want to go outside when it's cold. I don't want to get out of bed to dive in. I don't want to do it. I don't want to. People don't want to. Because that is exactly where everything starts and ends. And the other side of that. And that's the miracle of Hanukkah. This Hanukkah, ask for miracles. God wants you to ask for miracles. He wants you to ask for miracles, so just do it. What's the miracle you want in your life? Decide what is this miracle. When I say miracle, it's something that I don't know how to make it happen. I don't know. I'm, I'm out of, I'm a loss. I don't know how to, I don't know how to do this. What is that miracle that you want? Take a step out. One step. One step. One hishtadlis. One step in the direction of that thing outside of what's comfortable for you. Outside of the known. You, you have, you're scared of being, I, I don't know, I used to do this in high school. I used to have a fear of like, you know, being alone. Like not having my friends around me 24-7. And it bothered me. It bothered me that like I needed my friends in order to like go to the pizza store. In order to buy lunch. In order to like, I don't know, go to the bathroom bothered me so what I did was I we were in Bar Park our school was in Bar Park and right around the corner there was a Mendelssohn's pizza pizza store and what I would do is first for like a few months I would go by myself order a slice of pizza and sit by myself and eat it and be mortified every single time every time mortified every time sit there and everyone's like walking by me and looking at me like I never she has no friends and I'd be like eating my nebuch piece of pizza. And I did it on purpose. I did it because I wanted to get rid of my, 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 uh, uh, my dependency on needing people in order to, to, to live, to eat, lunch. And if my friend wouldn't come with me to pizza or she wanted to go to the bathroom for 15 minutes and fix her hair, I would wait. And half my period would, would be over and I would have to run back to class. Because I was so like insecure about going to the get lunch myself and sit there myself or whatever. And once I did that a bunch of times and I put myself in the seat of discomfort, all of a sudden it wasn't uncomfortable anymore. That's how we expand. That's how we grow. And that's how it happens. Take one step in the direction of the thing that you're insecure about, that you're scared of, that you don't know how you're going to succeed, that you don't know how to do this. Do it. Challenge yourself. Monsieur Snefesh, for anything in our life, is the glue for that thing to stick for the rest of our lives. Have a great day. Thank you. Welcome.